Okay. Rocket. All right, we're good. Questions for Coach Miller? It's only been a, a week since we talked to you last, but you kind of moved out of that defensive boot camp phase at this point, and then maybe what are things looking like on the floor? Yeah, you know, first three days for us, um, we're trying to install all our defense. Um, we're really focused on coaching the defensive end of the floor. You know, it's not that we're not playing offense. You know, it, we do have a ball in our hands. Not we take the rims off the goals and that type of thing. But it is really focused on just one end of the floor in terms of what we're emphasizing. Uh, since then, it's traditional practice. Um, you know, we're trying to put the whole thing together, trying to clean, you know, put it together, then come back and clean up the parts and then put it together again. And that's kind of, you know, in a big, big picture sense, kind of the process we go through from now until the first game. Uh, the guys have been great. I, you know, like the approach has been what you want it to be. Um, now everybody should should have a good approach right now in college basketball. I'd imagine everybody's working hard. You know, everybody's excited for the season. You know, the the thing that we preach every day is can you sustain it throughout? And I think the best way to do that is just by thinking about what's in front of you today. But but so far, I've been really pleased with our guys. What's your goal in the second phase as you're transitioning out of that boot camp? Yeah, this week is just trying to put it together. You know, it's so much different now, Keith, than it was when I first got into coaching. You know, we have the whole summer with them, you know, only four hours a week, but then you have the whole fall for four hours a week. You couldn't do that kind of stuff years ago. So it's not as if we're introducing concepts for the first time. So we're kind of back to those offensive concepts we've been working on this summer, you know, making sure that there's a different sense of urgency about the things that we're demanding on that side of the ball. And then we're adding, you know, as we go, we're adding actions, we're adding out of bounds plays, we're adding sideline out of bounds plays, we're working on situations. Um, so for the first time now, we get the chance to work with them every day. So you're kind of taking those foundational things and expanding on them and then adding some of the details. How does having a guy like a dude who was here as you're getting your culture set and situated here, having him still here, able to help these new guys coming in? It's been really neat. You know, I have three graduate assistants. Um, it's really neat because Jalen Stowe is in his third year with me as a grad assistant because he spent a year with me at UNC Greensboro. Now I coached against him in the Southern Conference. He played at Mercer. So he's not one of my former players, but this will be his third year with me. And so he has a really good understanding of just what goes on in our program and what's expected because he's now been with me, you know, for three years. Um, and then, but what's been really special is I had two GAs that have played for me. And I think one of the neatest things in coaching is when you can hire former players. Uh, so now Malik Massey, who played for four years for me at UNC Greensboro, is a first year grad assistant. And then Abdul, as you mentioned, uh, played for us here last year at UC. So I have guys now on the floor that have actually played through me and been through what these guys are going through. And that adds a lot to our program and it's also really special for me personally. You talked last week about some of the improvements the returning guys have made, some of the pieces you added. I know it's still really early, but do you ever find yourself like divvying up minutes in your head yet or figuring out how am I gonna get this guy on the floor some or where am I gonna put this guy? Yeah, I, th I think as you go, as you're going through preseason practice, you're trying to figure out the combinations you know, you're trying to figure out, you know, roles and where guys fit in. I know that's a process that you're going to go through, but, you know, I, I hate to say it. No, I don't know who's going to start the first game. No, I don't know who's going to be in what specific role. These guys are going to dictate that a lot with what they've done leading up to now and what they'll do between now and our first game. And the main thing we'll do is give guys opportunities. You know, we're going to give guys so many opportunities to kind of figure out where they fall in the landscape of, of playing time and roles and starting lineups and that type of thing. Not speaking of on specifics, but it was an up and down, up debut campaign for you. However, it seems like there's still a wide belief in you and your system and your culture and what you and your staff are building here. Do you sense that as you're out there on the trail? Yeah, I, th I think there's a ton of momentum for our program right now. Um, I, I think there's a ton of momentum for our athletic department. I think there's a ton of momentum for our university. And people sense that and feel it. And what's really neat is, is like it's, you know, you, you don't have to talk about it. Like people, people bring it up to us. Uh, you know, we, we kind of talk about our program and what we're doing every day. It's like kind of this movement, this vibe, you know. And I think it's real and it's genuine uh, because it is. And sometimes it's hard to put a finger and explain exactly what you mean by that. But I think people are starting to know. I'm just single somebody out, but Jared. You know, it seems like he's made some strides this offseason from last year. I know he did the thing overseas. Just what have you seen from him in terms of coming off that injury and some of the development progress he's made? 
boy, Jared Hensley, you know, our, our day-to-day approach this offseason was in line with the kind of way that I wanted to be in terms of guys' commitment to their game, guys' commitment to their bodies, and doing it in a everyday sustainable way. Jared Hensley might work as hard in all facets of development as any player I've ever coached. You know, I kept saying, you know, for years, he's the hardest freshman I've ever seen work because he's got some time to go. And then, then maybe the hardest, I mean, I've had him for, this will be year three. I've never had a player that was more committed than Jared Hensley day to day. And it's neat because he's starting to see some results from that. You know, like he's starting to, to see results in practice and in our live play. And he's really improved. And uh, I'm excited to see what happens with him as we go through the preseason. In terms of the leadership role in this locker room for you guys, you bring guys, David, Micah, Rob, Landers. Talk about what that leadership role and what that it's been like in the locker room so far this season. Yeah, we have an older team, an experienced team. Um, And so there's a lot of guys that are going to have opportunities to lead this team in their own way, in their own natural, genuine way. You know, I I think guys like David DeJulius, you know, John Newman, and uh, Jeremiah Davenport, Micah Adams Woods, you know, like Odie Aguam. Like you're talking about guys that are not just older and experienced, but have been in our program. You know, I, I think it's important that they lead themselves every single day in a way that also leads the team. And if they can do a little more than that, then I think you really kind of have something. But, you know, we have a bunch of guys, and I might have missed a couple, but we have a bunch of guys that are older, experienced, and have been in the program for a year. You know, that gives you a chance to have some really good leadership within the team. And then, you know, you mentioned some of the guys that come in with that same experience, even though they haven't been here. So, you know, you hope that you have a really cohesive group that understands what it's about to win because of that experience uh, and and, and then some of that continuity. I asked Chad this last week, but having a guy on your staff like Damar Johnson who played here, played at a high level here, won awards here, all that stuff, how beneficial is that? as you're building this here with these guys, but also out there on the recruiting, guy, recruiting trail trying to get guys to come in? Yeah, it's, uh, DeMar's value is so great. It, it's hard to quantify in one way. Um, you know, number one, he's done here what we're trying to do. He's experienced it here. He was on one of the greatest teams, you know, ever, Cincinnati. And, I, and I, obviously Kenyon breaks his leg, so you don't know what would have happened in the tournament, but I mean, that's one of the greatest teams in the history of this program. You know, and obviously there's some that have won championships and I'm not taking away from them. Uh, so he's done here what these guys are trying to do. He's done it personally, right? He's, he's been an elite player. Uh, he's gone on to be a first round draft pick. So he's done what they're trying to do as a team, been a part of that. And then he's done it himself. I mean, that, that has just immense value in terms of his ability to relate and to like encourage and inspire these guys. And then he has value in so many other ways. I mean, his connection to the community, his connection to the program has, has been invaluable. His understanding of what it takes every day for these guys to work to improve in terms of player development, which is his title, has been invaluable. He's really helped us in year one understand the landscape of where we are. You know, like again, in year one, there's so many things you don't know. Some of it, you're just trying to figure out who's who and what's what. And DJ, because he's been in the program in different roles, right? He was a player, and then he was also here as a grad assistant for Coach Cronin. So, I, like, those are just some of the ways that he's impacted us. But it's a it's a long list. So we we've we've been really pleased with what he's done here over the last year. Speaking of three teams, a little reunion just this weekend. Why was that important for for you in this program to bring some of those 92, 93 guys back here? Yeah, you know, we we've said this uh, since we got here. I mean. One of the greatest parts about you know coaching and playing in Cincinnati is you're one of you're a part of now one of the greatest programs in the history of our game, and you can't argue that. Like that's a fact, and so we're going to embrace that and we're going to celebrate that. And we've talked about that you know for a year and a half now. You know you have a, a 92 team that goes to the Final Four and a 93 team that goes to the Elite Eight. I mean, and it's a 30 year reunion, you know, I guess because of COVID and all that. So we tried to combine them together because it hadn't been done and it's a 30 year reunion and that's important. It's important for them. You know, I tell, I tell teams all the time, if you do something really special 
you'll come back together every five years and celebrate it. And I, I know that from, you know, being a part of the 2005 national championship team, you know, and that's, that's something that you'll do for the rest of your life. It's important that those guys, because of what they did here, come back and are recognized and have an opportunity to, to get back and connect. So we're thrilled. We're going to celebrate them. We're also going to make sure that we make it about them and nothing else. It's not going to be about media coverage. It's not going to be about trying to take from them in any way. It's going to be about them spending some time together and us celebrating what they did 30 years later. Any other questions for Coach? Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Thanks, guys. Get another team